every time I stop watching the episode, I go to Sean Lowe and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy, he loves her so much. He's in his ITM saying, I just want to marry her like with conviction. And he's like, are you sure you don't have a crush on him? I'm like, no, I just love how much he loves her. Mm. He loves her. So how are you doing? You look fabulous as always. You're so sweet. Thank you. No, I'm doing great. Um, the the holidays and the season has have been treating me really well. So I'm very happy. How are you? Good. I'm doing really good. Thank you. I can't believe like, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is coming gone and uh, the Christmas, the holidays right around the corner. I mean, how are you kind of preparing and what are some of your favorite traditions that you have with the family? So I, I just love being present with my family and I actually have a partnership with Wyndham Grand about being present with your family during the holidays. I mean, this year has been, it's going to be a really exciting year for everybody because for the most part, we're all going to be able to reconnect with our families. And that is the most important thing to me is not only getting together with family, but documenting it and then organizing it later. So what Wyndham Grand has is this very cool travel keepsake box that is all about organizing your memories from the holidays or from your travel time together. Because some people might be going places and having this uninterrupted, very specific time together, concentrated time. And for me, I have everything is a keepsake to me. When we're on a trip, when we're doing holiday stuff, like I will have even a tag of an ornament that I bought mm -hmm. that I will know is so important to me, which sounds so silly, but really the whole picture of uh, the holidays is, is little things that make up the whole picture. So instead of just your Christmas card, that's really pretty, it's no, where did we go? What did we do? And so this travel keepsake box has compartments where you can organize all these things like tags of ornaments or whatever uh, inside. And what Wyndham Grand uh, uh, people that are like staying at the, the hotels will be doing like in their property. So there's like a Clearwater uh, property, but at a lot of these places, around the country, they're surprising and delighting people that are staying there, like families, with these keepsake boxes and a Fujimax um, instant, Instamac, instant, in, sorry, Instax mini camera. So one of the ones that has instant photos, which my kids absolutely love, so they can document their trip together. So all that being said, I my favorite tradition is just being together and documenting being together. I love that so much. Are you guys traveling around the holidays this season or are you guys uh, staying home? No, we're staying home, which mm -hmm. makes me happy. But recently I got to be reunited with my family in Seattle. So my sister, this is the first time in seven years that, that has happened. Wow. My sister, my younger sister lives in France and she doesn't even know me as a mom, which is really hard to take. So when we were together, it was like the best reuniting so i think i got my some of my holiday you know family reconnection on that trip but i'm holding on to that oh my god that's home. so amazing that must have been such an amazing experience for you both <gasps> It was great. <laughs> no, totally. I mean, obviously around the holidays is also very stressful. When it comes to holiday stress, how do you and Sean kind of manage that? And have you had any mom meltdowns yet? <laughs> well, um, I haven't had any yet. It is December, what, 2nd? Yes, <laughs> we have a little bit of time. <laughs> but, but usually usually the, um, the dividing of responsibilities is me doing about 99% of them. Mm -hmm. And then the 1% that Sean Lowe does is really managing those meltdowns. So uh, that's about how it, it divides up. And I'm totally fine with that because I, I I don't think I'm a micromanager, but I must be mm -hmm. if I'm like, no, you can't even, don't even try to decorate the tree. Like that's, you're not gonna do good at it. I wanna do it with the kids. So it, I definitely put it on myself to be stressed. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what the season calls for is having so much to do and tons of overload. But it's it's a great memory, in my opinion. No, definitely. I mean, we were talking about keepsakes. Is there something that you guys do every single year that like like you said, you do get an ornament from every single vacation and put that up on the tree? Or is there something that you guys do every single year that kind of yeah. commemorate the holiday? Um, well, something that's really cute that Sean Lowe's family does that we have now incorporated into our traditions, mm -hmm. it's called Jimmy Coco Christmas. And so if we're not traveling during the holidays and we're staying at home, we get in our car with 
our pajamas on mm -hmm. and we go look at Christmas lights and in our, in our pajamas, we go and get like a, a Starbucks or, you know, a cider or hot chocolate or something while we're driving. So that's something that I love that has been added to our list of traditions. So that was, that was a really cute one. That's adorable. I really like that. I might steal that idea. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> what are the kids asking for, for this holiday season? And do you guys go all out on the gifts or you just, or do you kind of try to rein it in a little bit? I always say it's going to be low key because I'm, I feel like I'm a low maintenance person. And when I grew up, it was low maintenance. But every time I see something, I'm like, oh, they would love that. And I can't really save it. You just never know what they're going to be into next right. year. Mm -hmm. But Samuel has asked for kinetic sand. Super easy to do. Uh, Isaiah has asked for trains, which is so wholesome and cute. And Mia, I don't know. I mean, she's not even two yet, but probably something Peppa Pig. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she's uh, about to turn two right around the holiday, right? I mean, how do you feel about entering the terrible two stage yet again? Well, I have yet to see my kids because obviously every kid is different, but I don't see terrible twos. I see like the three major thing. So it's the teenager at three and that one is harder, but I don't know because she's a girl. Right. So mm -hmm. if it happens, it's, she's kind of opinionated and has a little bit of an attitude which is cute to, I mean, at some extent, unless it's directed at me. Um, and then we have a problem, but um, she, she's, she's just a different, a different type of person that I'm going to have to uh, manage differently than the boys because mm -hmm. she just is her own person. But I'm, I'm excited about it. But the only problem is how do I not, I don't want to say spoil because we don't spoil with love we do, but I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? It's two days before Christmas. So I want her to feel super special on her birthday and not feel like it's lumped in. So right. we're doing like a, like a nut cracker. She's going to be two. So I'm going to say like two, two or something. And it's like a ballet. This is literally just going to be at my house uh, <laughs> with us. And I'm going to make my sons and husband wear a two, two. And then that's, that's literally going to be the party, but whatever, it'll be fun. I love it. Is it easier so far raising boys or a girl? Is it? I would say I would say boys, the responsibilities are very different for the longevity of their lives, right? So girls, we have to teach them to be strong. We have to teach them to be independent. And um, like in addition to their innate mothering, loving things. And then boys, you have to teach them to be kind and respectful. Like to know that the men that they're going to grow up to be, the women, the woman that she's going to grow up to be are very strong, independent, respectful, and kind. So, um, it's, e but the boys seem to be easier. <laughs> she, she just, she's just more so much like me that it's kind of hard to say, cause then it, you look in the mirror and you're like, Oh my gosh, I really have to work on that. If she's doing that, it's because of me. So I have to work on it and I have, she has to work on it. So totally. it's, it's like double duty. It really like, I don't is. want that. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I know my daughter's two and a half and I'm kind of going through the same thing. Cause she's like super bossy all of a sudden. I'm like, am I like that? Do I, is that my sound? Totally. <laughs> it's such a funny mirror. It's great, but it's also hard to take sometimes. It really, it really is. I know the last time um, you, I spoke to you and Sean, you guys were kind of on the fence about maybe baby number four. Are you th thinking about that anymore? Or, you know, I think the last time you said, you know, it might be a little selfish of us to do that because, you know, we want to, you know, focus all of our attention on the kids that we have now. Yeah, I feel like it's probably airing on that side. You never know what happens, right? So we don't know if we are greeted with a pregnancy or if we're greeted with a child that we feel super compelled to adopt. We just don't know what that's, we're open to everything. I think right now we're super hyper-focused on being present with our three children that we have now because we know that once you get into the higher numbers, I don't want to neglect any anything and Sean Lo doesn't want to miss anything. So he knows that when he was growing up, he had all these practices for sports and all stuff and his dad made it to every single one. And so I think when we're getting, we're creeping up into higher numbers, Sean Lo is a little scared that he is going to miss things and he doesn't want to miss things. So we're really weighing things, but we're also seeing what opportunities will be opened up in the coming years. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a lot, we have a lot of love to give. 
and our children do too. So you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. You never yeah. know, but nothing, nothing's permanent yet. I'll just, I'll be that vague about it. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I love it. You know, Sean always has such a good time on social media. Is there anything that he's ever done that embarrassed you or you're like, maybe you should take that down? Um, maybe once, I can't remember the circumstance, but usually he runs it by me because he wants to make sure it's funny and it's worded properly. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of a good, um, we, like we, we go back and forth making sure that, oh, does this make sense? Could it be funnier? Could it be more succinct? Uh, so we're good sounding boards on each other, but I think there's maybe one tweet. That's the only thing that's coming to mind that I was like, that's not cool, man. Like maybe about me being a pregnancy brain. I have no idea what it was about, but he's very respectful. he's like, oh, I'm sorry that, you know, I didn't, I should have checked with you first or whatever. But a lot of the funny things that we've gotten in terms of our interactions on social media have been him like roasting me. And then one really like recently Gwyneth Paltrow commented on our little thing, right? So it was me just kind of coming back at him. So rather than doing it behind the scenes, we'll do it in in the open because he just thinks he's so funny and everyone thinks he's so funny. And I'm like, get down to earth. Like just, and, and it's kind of like, I'm either the straight man and he's the funny one or it goes vice versa. But we always have such a good time doing it. I don't think there's any, ever anything where he was disrespectful to me. Were you guys like absolutely dying when Gwen Paltrow kind of chimed in on all of this? Well, I'd seen it and I was like, wait, wait, Gwyneth Paltrow just include, I mean, cause it was on so many different random meme pages or accounts that it wasn't from his original tweet. It was a picture of his tweet. And this was seven, you know, or five years ago that this happened. So it just seems like it's now taking off, but she also tagged like the wrong account when she was responding. So that was confusing too, but it was really weird to know what she was actually referencing and suggesting in her reply. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, it was, it was like Wolverine. Like, it was very, very not safe for work. <laughs> but it was also like bizarre, not like, oh, a vibrator or, you know, like a normal toy. It was like, wait, what do you're supposed to do with that? So I thought it was funny. And she clearly wanted everybody to, to, see the documentary or whatever she was she was promoting <laughs> yes i will i can't i can't imagine that wolverine claws have been added to the to the low household <laughs> so maybe funny. maybe for halloween you know maybe the kid i don't know what they are i just know that it's supposed to be sensory or something i don't know now we're going crazy on this topic <laughs> so funny um obviously i have to ask a little bachelor stuff have you have you been watching michelle's season so far of course, of thoughts, course. The thoughts on uh, the final three and, you know, what kind of advice or what do you wish you knew before going into Fantasy Suite Week? Oh, gosh, those are good questions. Uh, obsessed with her top three. I was obsessed with her top four. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're just Tasha season two. You see these guys that are like, wow, how do you even, how do you eliminate anybody? And I think that she, based on what we see, I think she did a, a good job narrowing it to three. But I mean, Brandon, every time I stop watching the episode, I go to Sean Lowe and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy, he loves her so much. He's in his ITM saying, I just want to marry her like with conviction. And he's like, are you sure you don't have a crush on him? I'm like, no, I just love how much he loves her. Mm -hmm. He loves her. So it's just been a really fun thing to watch and to watch Michelle just hold her own, be super confident, be very poised, very eloquent, communicate how she feels, also be very decisive and discerning on how she chooses to, to talk about certain things and that she's quick. She's, I mean, she's, she's an inspiration. Um, and I've just been really enjoying watching her create partnerships and relationships with these guys. Definitely. And then following up, what, um, what do you wish you knew about the fantasy suite before going into it? And if you could give advice to these guys, obviously they've already gone through it, but if you could give advice to people going through that as well, what would it be? Well, maybe on Clayton season, you know, yeah, right. um, cause that is, that is more similar to my situation, Right. but I don't, I mean, I think taking advantage of the time because you can talk about anything during those, you know, what, 12 hours and uninterrupted. I don't know how long, I can't remember how long it was, but it's use the time wisely. Um, I know that I'm sure 
some of it is very, okay, well, I want to do things that we can't do on camera that I feel comfortable with. But for the most part, I feel like you can use that time to really have no guard, like your guard doesn't have to be up in any sense of the word and you can be totally yourself. Like I remember in our fantasy suite, we just, I think he like snuck in his iPad, which was like totally not good. And we just like listened to music and talked about what a normal day would be like. And yeah, you can do that besides music. Um, you can do that on camera, but it just is try to replicate as much as you can of what it's going to look like outside in the real world so that you can see if you're actually compatible in the real world. Yeah. Um, I think that that's something that we did really well um, and use the time really wisely. Yeah, definitely. What, what are your thoughts on Clayton? I feel like, you know, watching this season that you didn't really get to know him so, so much and I, I'm kind of feeling a little bit of a disconnect and not really under, understand why they didn't pick one of the top four, but I want to get your thoughts on Clayton and, and if you're yeah. excited about the season. I feel similarly, and I think that that's why they've been trying to like, you know, at the end of the episode, they'll show clips of him talking with um, one of Michelle's students. And so I think that he's going to be a really compelling person to watch and watch unfold. I mean, remember Juan Pablo, not that he's like the model of, of bachelors, but we didn't know anything about him. He didn't even have a one-on-one -on -one, and we watched him and his season unfold because he was a, he was a, fa a fan favorite. So I think it's going to be a similar situation where we don't have any real uh, preconceived notions about Clayton. We know he's a nice guy. We know he's funny. He gets along with other guys and he's good looking and um, and he has a really great family. So it'll probably be similar, I, I'm assuming, to Sean Lowe's season mm -hmm. where they, they cast really nice girls for him. But yeah, I'm excited to get to know more. And yes, of course, I'll be watching. 